Hello and welcome to the last video in the discussion series. For this video, we will be talking about the phase changes that the states of matter undergo. So each physical state is what we call a phase, which is physically distinct and homogeneous part of the system. So the water in a closed container constitutes one phase. The water vapor above the liquid is a second phase. And when we add some ice, and then there are there will be three phases so in this uh, discussion we will examine the properties of each phase as determined by the relative energies of the particles and the transformation from one phase to another so the properties of each phase are determined by the balance between the potential and kinetic energy of the particles so when we say potential energy this is in the form of attractive forces that tends to draw the particles together. Now, when we say kinetic energy, the kinetic energy is associated with movement that tends to disperse particles. So, potential energy, it draws the particles together while kinetic energy disperses the particles. And as discussed in general chemistry 1, when a substance is existing as a gas, liquid, or a solid, it depends on the following. Number one, would be the balance between the kinetic energy of its particles and number two, the strength of the interaction between the particles. Now, here is the comparison of the attractive forces versus kinetic energy and the properties of the different phases of matter. So for gas, remember that attractive forces are weak relative to kinetic energy. That's why gases, uh, the gas particles are far apart and a gas has no fixed shape or volume. Whereas in liquids, attractive forces are stronger because particles have less kinetic energy. That's why a liquid can flow and change shape but has a fixed volume. And then lastly, for solids, they, their attractions dom uh, dominate motion and then particles are fixed in place relative to each other. That's why solid has a fixed shape and volume. Now, for the phase changes uh, each state of matter undergo, when solid is converted to liquid, we call it melting. Liquid to gas is vaporizing. Gas to liquid is condensing. Liquid to solid is freezing. And then we have solid to gas, which is sublimation. And then gas to solid, we also have deposition. So, from, from our previous video, we discussed the endothermic and exothermic reaction. When we say endothermic reaction, this absorbs energy from the surroundings while exothermic reaction releases energy to the surroundings. And then, we call the amount of energy needed to melt 1 gram of a substance as the heat of fusion. And then, we also have heat of vaporization which is the amount of energy needed to vaporize 1 gram of a substance. And then here is a summary of the energy and phase changes that matter undergoes. Hopefully, you are uh, still aware of the endothermic and exothermic process as well as the phase changes like conversion from solid to liquid, liquid to solid. Now, to illustrate the different phase changes of matter, we also use different diagrams. And one of those diagrams would be heating curves. A heating curve shows how the temperature of a substance changes as heat is added. That's why it is called heating curve. So in here, in the heating curve, uh, we have here point A wherein a solid exists. And as the temperature increases, it reaches its melting point at point B. So more heat causes uh, the solid to melt to a liquid without increasing its temperature wherein we observe this in the plateau from uh, point B to point C. So added heat increases the temperature of the liquid until its boiling point is reached at point D. And more heat causes the liquid to boil to form a gas without increasing its temperature. That, that is the plateau from point D to point E. Now, additional heat then increases the temperature of the gas and each diagonal line here in the heating curve will correspond to the presence of a single phase, either a solid, a liquid, or a gas. While the horizontal lines will represent uh, the phase changes, it's either from solid to liquid, 
liquid to gas, or gas to liquid, and liquid to solid. So here are the different phase changes that we talked about earlier. And then here is a cooling curve of gaseous water uh, converted into ice. So this is the opposite of the heating curve. And then lastly, we talked about the phase diagram. So in the phase diagram, it summarizes the condition at which a substance exists as a solid, liquid, or a gas. So in this point, we have here the melting and freezing of uh, melting from solid to liquid and then liquid to gas is what we call freezing. And then we also have here the conversion from liquid to gas and vice versa. And then we also have sublimation and deposition at this point, wherein there is a conversion from solid to gas and gas to solid. Now, we also have what you call here the triple point, wherein uh, the, the substance is existing in three phases at once. And then we also have here uh, the critical point at which the densities of the liquid and gas phases become equal. So at this triple point, so at this critical point, uh, it, the substance is, as, is considered as a supercritical fluid. And then as I have said earlier, at the triple point, all three phases are in equilibrium. So for the phase diagram of water, we also have here the solid liquid line slants to the left for water because the solid is less dense than the liquid and water expands on the freezing. So the boiling point of a liquid is the temperature at which the vapor pressure equals the external pressure, while the normal boiling point of a substance is observed at the standard atmospheric pressure of 760 torr. So as the, as the external pressure on a liquid increases, the boiling point also increases. So here are just uh, the different illustrations on uh, the increase or, or on the effect of increase in pressure on the melting point of ice and the boiling point of water. And that ends our discussion series for intermolecular forces of attraction. Thank you for listening.